Hey there, Hoshpap here, welcome to another Summer 2016 Ninjago review. Today we'll be looking at the Ultra Stealth Raider, set number 70595, with 1093 pieces. Just quickly, I want to apologise for the visible table in the background. This set is pretty large and actually exceeds the workspace area that I have, so... Sorry about that, but um, we'll move on to the minifigures in a second. Speaking of minifigures, this set contains seven minifigures, which are Cole, Zane, Jay, Kai, Master Chen, Aizorai, and Master Yang. This set is definitely good to buy if you want to get all four original ninja in their new outfits. First up for the minifigures, we have Master Chen with his ghostly green jade blade. Only one can remain. He has back printing on his torso and he also has his unique hat piece. I think the printing is exactly the same, but I'm not entirely sure, they might have changed it. Here's a look at him without any of his gear on. He's got a bone necklace or something by the looks of it. He's got the same face as he did. And then here's a look at him from the back. Next up, we have Sensei Yang as Iron Sharpens Iron, Sensei Sharpens Student. He has the classic ghost legs. It's a translucent white and green mix. He has back printing as well as front printing on his torso. He does not have a double-sided face. He's got a black beard and a silver hat. He's also carrying a ghostly arrow blade on a chain. And he has some sort of lantern on the back, which I assume is pretty important. It's probably a major plot element for the next series of Ninjago. Here's a look at the front of Sensei Yang without any weapons on. And now I've removed Sensei Yang's beard and also back piece that holds the lantern. So now you can see his actual face, as well as his printing on the torso. And also if we go around, we can see the printing on the back as well. The back printing is pretty similar to something you'd find on a Sensei Wu minifigure, except for in darker colours. Here's a closer look at the lantern. It's made up of quite a few different parts actually. There's the piece that's used for the paint roller at the top, and it's quite nice. It's got this new piece that dangles under it that sort of moves around, gives it a nice look, and it has uh, printing on the actual lantern itself. They're not stickers, it's on both sides, so if we turn it around, it's also there. I think it's the same symbol on the back of Yang's outfit. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Well, next up, we have one of Master Chen's Anacondrai cultists, except for he is actually an Anacondrai warrior. This is Aizor, Rai. He used to be called Aizor. He's the one with the missing eye, as you can see there, it's silver. He doesn't have any other things on him, he just has a sword, but the minifigure itself is a nice one, it's got cool printing on the head, I like that, and he's got back printing as well, as you would expect, and yeah, he's a, he's a good minifigure. I think the original had some sort of shoulder plate piece, maybe, I think, but um, yeah, that, that was a, a while ago they released the Tournament of Element sets, but it's nice we get a, a follower of Chen's gives you more enemies to fight against. First for the ninja we have Kai. He has his new outfit as well as the two-toned colored headpiece with the dark red and the red. What I like about these outfits is I think the particular printing on these is some of them are reused from the their original outfits or their designs are very similar anyway. They remind me of the Rise of the Snakes series. Um, and here's a look at Kai from the back. He does have back printing. We will take off the shoulder piece in a minute. I also do like that new shoulder piece they added from Skybound because you can put two swords in there and it just looks great. Kai does actually come with two swords, it's just that they're on his bike at the moment. So we're going to leave them there. We'll show you that in a bit. Here's Kai without any of his helmet or shoulder piece gear on and from the back. You can see he has printing, and the printing actually does match up with the scabbards, so that's pretty cool. So the front of these minifigures are pretty similar to the originals, but the back printing matches up with their new gear piece, which I think is cool. Uh, here we have Zane. Um, he has similar printing again. He's got unique printing on the legs, as well as chest printing. He actually has a silver scabbard piece compared to 
Kai and the rest of the ninja who have a brown one. So that that's a nice attention to detail they did. Again, he has the two-toned headpiece. They all have, actually, the really nice new two-coloured headpiece. I think it makes them stand out more than some of their original designs. Aside from that, Zane has a double-sided face, but it's exactly the same one as we've seen before. But like Kai, he has the back printing that's quite, quite similar. It's got the two sword scabbard holders printed on the back. The next two minifigures are slightly different compared to the other ones. We have Cole here. He does not have his <laughs> larvary body he had in the Rock Rotor, but he does have a normal body here. No transparent arms or orange hands. He has similar printing to the other ninja, leg printing and a similar front to his original, the two-toned headpiece. And he's carrying weapons here because, unlike the other ninja, he doesn't really have room to put them anywhere on the Stealth Raider. Uh, they didn't build that in, but he can still hold them while he's driving it, so it's fine. He has the same double-sided face as in the other set, as well as having similar back printing to the other ninja. Lastly is Jay. He has the same armoured silver arm as he did in the Serpentine series. He also has leg printing and belt printing. I don't really mention the belt printing, but they all they all usually have those nowadays. Um, what I like about these particular variants of the ninja is all of the outfits are slightly different, like all the leg printing on each one is slightly different, has different variations, so that's cool. And he has the same shoulder scabbard piece as the other ninja do. He also has the two-toned coloured helmet, and um, there is actually one difference, which is actually really cool. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the one thing I did notice about the ninja actually is that their arms colours are not the same as their torso. In previous waves they had them all the same colour but like with Kai he's all the bright red and then his arms are dark red and here you can see Jay's got bright blue but his arms are dark blue except for the, the armoured one and Cole has grey arms so that, that's pretty cool that they're doing that. It gives them a bit more detail, makes them stand out a bit more compared to before. This is one of the amazing features of this set and something which is just really awesome that they did. It finally happened, Jay has a new face. Not to be fair, he had that, that skybound face with the eye patch, but he has a new normal face. And not just that, not only does he have a new face, he has a double-sided face. So here he's smiling, which is nice, because <laughs> before they've only been pretty serious. The eyebrows are still sort of serious, so when he's wearing the mask, it can still look like the original a bit, but he has a sort of frowny face on the back, slightly concerned face, and I think that is really cool, they're introducing new faces, so now everyone but Kai has had a new face. <laughs> they really need to give Kai something. Um, so yeah, now he is the odd one out, unless you count Sensei, but Sensei Wu's face is fine, I think, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, that's just really cool, they gave Jay a new double-sided face, it's great. It's gonna be fun for stop motions. Now we're done with the minifigures, let's move on to the vehicles. First up we have Master Chen's Chenosaurus. I, <laughs> I had to look this the name of this thing up because I was thinking, oh, what is it? It's like a dinosaur with a chair on it, it must have a name. And it did, so there we go. Uh, I like that we finally get Master Chen's chair. I actually can't believe they didn't add that in the Tournament of Elements series. <laughs> it's a pretty important part of the story, is chair. But now we have it. Sadly, it doesn't come with any buttons, which is a shame. They could have had some stickers on there for buttons, but uh, never mind. You can just pretend they're on there. So how you put Master Chen on there, you have to bend the sword that he has to the, to the side, so you can actually sit in there correctly. Because otherwise he can't hold the jade blade. And he sits in there quite nicely. The chair can actually be removed. So, yeah, it can just come off. And in fact, we're going to remove this for when we're looking at the features of the Chenosaurus, was it? <laughs> I think it is. So, this has a lot of poseable things going on. So it has a movable head, and it has quite a few joints, so you could put that in many different poses that you want to. The jaw actually opens and closes, which is nice. You can't really fit a minifigure in there, but it's cool that it does that. Uh, it has two 
small saw blades here on ball joints, one on each side. That kind of reminds me of mini T-Rex arms, They're just sort of tiny. The legs are on a ball joint as well, so you can move them around. And then there's also snap joints where they attach to the main body. So you can also move the legs around as well. Uh, this particular dinosaur does stand up quite well. You've got to get the posing right on the legs, but it it does stand up. On the back, it's got another saw blade. It's got so many saw blades. It can This one can only move up and down. It's not on a ball joint. And the rest of the tail can also move up and down. Some of it's on snap joints. Some of them are on those smoother joints. And the top part of the... Chenosaurus. I'm not going to get used to saying that name. It has two spring shooters at the side which can move around. They, could, they have quite a lot of posability. They can't move up and down, but you can, I guess, raise and lower the dinosaur to do that. Um, it has a crossbow on the top as well, so it's not just a spring shooter. And of course, you push it inwards and then it fires. So that's nice. Uh, they, those work quite well, they're very easy to access. You just gotta remember which way to push to fire them. And on the top is a sticker. I think that sticker may have been used before actually on one of the other Tournament of Elements sets. It's an engine sticker. It's a, it's a cool sticker nonetheless, I just I think I remember seeing something similar before. So that's that's it for the um, for the Chenosaurus. Let's move on to the actual chair itself. And here's a closer look at the chair Master Chen sits in. I believe it captures the design of the chair very well. It has a lot of white spiky teeth pieces. Uh, it's probably very similar to the TV show chair. I'd have to probably look at it for cross-referencing. Now it can only fit one minifigure of course. And it has these pieces here which make it look like it has feet for it to stand on. It doesn't fall over, which is nice. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice chair. And here is the Ultra Stealth Raider. To make sure I can get the whole thing in shot, I actually moved the background back a bit. So again, apologize for the table. Um, but it's more important that you see the set. So that's, that's the most important thing. We put all the ninjas back in their particular areas they're supposed to be in. Kai's on his own little side part and Cole and Zane sit inside. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get on to the features of this particular vehicle. Let's start with the driving. So to drive it, you just of course move it. The crawler tracks, as well as all the wheels, do move, which is nice. It has a huge back wheel, which is just cool. And before I even start with most of the features of this set, I think this version of the ultrasonic radio is a lot better to the previous one, even for the simple fact that all the ninja can actually fit on it. The previous one, they didn't leave enough room, so they couldn't all sit there. I think it's much better designed compared to the original. So yeah, moving it is very easy. I don't know if you noticed, but on the actual crawl tracks themselves, they have these new... I, I don't even know what you call these, but they're these little black rubbery pieces, and they just slot into the holes of the crawl tracks. It allows it to grip on hard surfaces and actually move, which I think is really nice and they're probably going to include that in a lot of the newer sets that have crawler tracks on them. And as to be expected, if you compare this to the original Ultrasonic Raider, the Stealth Raider has detachable vehicles, except for it has a lot more. So um, I think we'll start with that, it's a bit easier. So the first one is Kai's sort of bike. It makes up the side of the Ultra Stealth Raider. You just pull it off quite easily. You just grab the vehicle and you push. There's a little pin that the bike attaches to the vehicle here. And then Kai gets his own bike. You can drive around and it works really well. Even detached, it looks like its own little vehicle. It doesn't look out of place at all. Um, it only has one stud shooter on the side, which kind of makes sense. It does have ammo, spare ammo on the side for more, so you can reload it. It can angle itself up, which is nice, and down. So that's this little bike. He also has uh, Kai's red symbol on the front.
And we also have Jay's bike on the other side. It detaches in exactly the same fashion as Kai's bike. It also has a blue stud, not stud shooter, the spring shooter that I just fired it <laughs> by accident. But uh, yeah, you can reload it by grabbing the spare ammo that's attached under here. I must just do that now. And there you go, it's also got the blue printed piece. These are all printed, those those symbols. Um, I don't know what they mean, I know they mean something, and they're all related to each particular ninja. I just can't read the language. Um, but I'm sure someone's got a translation somewhere. So again, a nice bike. And now for the main ultrasonic radar itself. It's kind of funny without the other two things. It still drives because it's got a wheel underneath. So now the other two vehicles aren't propping it up. The other wheel comes into play. So um, you can still drive it like it is now. There's nothing wrong with that. And it still looks fine in my opinion. And it drives really well. Like the big wheel and the small wheel underneath gives it a lot of movability. Or mobility rather. Um, on each side it's got a six shooter that fires studs. It's got Cole's symbol on it, so it's to show that Cole drives the main part of the vehicle. And you fire those just as you expect. This one actually works really well. You twist the handle that's at the back here. And there's one on the other side, which I won't be firing, but it is there. And now for the final vehicle. It's Zane's flyer. I'm going to call it a flyer. You just slide it off. There is a hinge on the back of Cole's front cockpit piece and Zane's flyer just slots in there when you want to dock it. But when you want to take it off you just pull it back and lift it off. And there you go. You have Zane's flyer. It has a cool feature where if you push this piece in it pops out the two side bits to give it wings. And it has helicopter feet, which is nice. Uh, it doesn't have any weapons from the looks of it, but we'll get on to this in more detail in a second. And what you're left with <laughs> is this long vehicle, which again, still looks okay. However, it can look better. What you can do is you can grab the head or the front piece, lift it up, and roll it all the way back, and now the vehicle looks more complete. Because that's another problem the other vehicle had. When the flying vehicle came off, there was just this really massive long empty bit in the middle. It just looked bad, but they solved that here because you can flip the front piece round and now it has a front wheel and it's like a vehicle all on its own. So you actually have, in total, four vehicles for the Ninja with this set. And they still don't all fit into frame. And now the, the plane is sort of hidden at the back, but it's fine. So yeah, this this set is, in my opinion, very uh, it's good value for money. I'd say it's got a lot of cool vehicles, um, but there's still more to show, and there's still more to tell as well. There's a lot of stickers with this set, by the way. I don't know if you've already noticed. Uh, again, this drives very well. I just I love how this thing looks. It's amazing. So we're gonna flip this back round. This is just so fun to flip this. <laughs> um, here, on the inside. You can see we have stickers, and those stickers aren't just like boring stickers, they're pretty fun, like they tell you, oh you gotta dock the ship this way or that way to take it off, and here it's got the words ammo, and if you flip it up you can see you've got some more ammo for your six shooters. These do come out, but <laughs> I think you're gonna need to get a piece or something just to stick in there to, to get them out, um, because I just can't, they're just, they're not stuck. But, I can't get them out. <laughs> what they are on, there are studs on top of a flat plate piece. So you can take them out. Um, and you're supposed to be able to take them out, but mine are, mine, are, mine are slightly stuck. I guess if you take a sword and, and then poke at them, you could probably lift them out there. Uh, that's all of the features for the main vehicle. I don't know if you noticed, but it's also got some lights at the front. There's some wedge transparent pieces, and they just look really awesome. There's a lot of detail on this set, if you hadn't already noticed. 
and here is the flyer. It's a nice flyer, it's got Zane's symbol on the back, and it's also got a lot of stickers, which is fine. And all the cockpit pieces are printed as well, there's no stickers on those, which is, <laughs> I'm glad for that, because uh, it would be a pain to get all of that on correctly. The main feature is underneath, there is a pod, it's also got, this is, this is a sticker, um, I believe you're supposed to put someone in there. So like the tumbler, it's got some sort of jail system, which I think is cool, so that's the purpose of this flyer, is to catch people. By the looks of it, it doesn't have any weapons on it, so this is just primarily for reconnaissance and capturing people in the transparent glass windshield. And to take the minifigures out is really easy, you just lift this piece off. It connects very... it, connect, it connects well, but it, it's very easy to take off, it, it's not stuck. These two bits at the back keep it in place, and then you just lift out your figure. There's a lot of room in there. You could probably, if you take off their gear, you could probably fit two minifigures in here. I wouldn't see why you couldn't. Um, Zane's is the same, although it actually has a slight difference. So let's go back to Zane's. Zane's particular flyer inside has a sticker piece and a few more controls than Cole's. Cole just has a printed wedge with some controls on it. Um, but Zane's actually has space either side of him for his shurikens, which I think is cool. So you can actually put his weapon somewhere. As I said, Cole's weapons are small enough so it, it doesn't really matter, but it's nice that they had uh, space for Zane's. And of course to attach that back on you just slot it on the top, move it forward, and there we go. It's attached back on the Ultra Sonic Raider. I forgot to mention, with these vehicles, these two swords at the back are actually for the ninja to fight with. They're not just decoration. So you just pull those off and then you can give these to the ninja when they need them. And let's rebuild the Ultra Sonic Raider. Attaching these side vehicles. Very easy to do. This set is such a lot of fun. Can't wait to make a film with it. So yeah, that's it. This is the complete version of the Ultra Stealth Raider. So, that was my complete review of the Ultra Stealth Raider set. This set has a lot of minifigures, and it's nice that the enemy that you're fighting, the Genosaurus, uh, is actually a, quite a quite a large vehicle that they're going against. Sometimes they include something really tiny to fight against something really big, and it's kind of unbalanced. But here, here it works well. And as you probably already know, I, I really like the Ultra Stealth Raider set. Um, I think the vehicle's really great on its own, even if it didn't detach. It's a great vehicle, and the fact that it does detach into four vehicles and has all those cool play features and different hidden functions is just awesome. I think this set was really well designed and I hope they continue making more great sets like these so if you can get this set I would definitely recommend buying it or saving up for it because you get all the ninja which is great because then you just have them all except for Lloyd and Nia of course but um, those, they come in other sets quite easily so Getting the four original ones, this is this is a very easy way to get them. And of course you get the main villain, Sensei Yang. Or Master Yang. Forgot which way around they called him. I think it's Sensei Yang. Uh, yeah, he's, he's the main villain for the next season. So this is a great way to get him as well. So that's it for my review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.